wasn't always an artist. After college, I did many different things, creative things, but mostly shadowing other creatives until this pounding in my heart that I had to do something creative, something with my hands. I knew it was going to be with my hands. Um, and the boyfriend at the time that I was with gave me a palette of paints and a pad of paper. He's now my husband. <laughs> and as you can see from the palette, all the colors aren't used. This was years ago. Because as soon as I figured out that I could externalize my internal world and move through my emotions and my life in a way such as painting, I was off and running. And I didn't need anything. I, mean, I used any and all mediums. I didn't go to the art store, I don't think, till years later. It was whatever I could get my hands on to build, to create, to wind, to put together that express my internal world. And I want to share with you how transformative that's been for me as a person, as an artist. And therefore, I think it can be the same with others. And I'll tell you a story recently that is, uh, illustrates this. I was in my studio, on my way to the studio the other uh, week or so. And getting in sometimes is difficult. There's things at home that have to be done. And just getting in there sometimes is, uh, is a struggle. So a lot was on my mind at this particular time, not the least of which was my son, who may have been going through his own struggles at eight years old and other things in home. Anyway, I come in with a pretty heavy heart, and I really want to leave it behind. I want to walk in the door, take my paints, and escape until I have to go to my other life where I have other responsibilities. But in that studio, I wanted to escape. And that's a problem, because art and growth happens when you look at the stuff that makes you the most fearful. So I'm painting in my studio. I'm thinking, oh, I'm just going to make something happen here, pushing paint around and waiting for something to happen magical. Sometimes it does, but not this time. And so I put down my brushes and, and put aside my tools. And I, and I knew that sometimes I'll start with journaling, but this time I didn't. Again, I just wanted to shut the door, get busy, get into that blissful place. So nothing was happening, and I stopped, and I asked myself, what's on my mind? What's in my heart right now? And really what was in my heart was my son. And... I guess I felt like there was struggle, but when I thought of him, there was no struggle. When I thought of him, there was only joy and bliss, and I would think of his energy and his vibe, and it was easy for me to take materials and gesture and translate that onto the canvas. So what was difficult and what was a struggle became transformative. And as I got up and, and started painting and using the colors that so exemplified his spirit and his bliss, I realized that I was uplifted. I was transformed from the person I walked in being. I was transformed and uplifted, and I couldn't wait to share my painting, and I did so. And, and um, I think it affected others as they looked upon it. So in figuring out what materials I use um, to go about my process of painting. Nothing is discarded. And that's a great lesson, because in life, nothing can be discarded. To shine the light on all materials and bring them to the table, I can transform them into something that makes me feel good, makes me feel better, lets me move through a situation. So in my studio, I use old books. Right now, I'm using a lot of paper. This is just very current, lots of paper, old books, wire, metal, wood shavings, song sheets. And it gives me like this history to the canvas. It gives me the darkness that I'm able to play with, the age that I can transform into something new and repurpose. The transformation in the studio so exemplifies what happens in the real world. As I paint, I realize how much this, this is reflected in my relationships. I'm painting one day, and my dear friend calls me. She's sobbing. I pick up the phone because I know she's struggling, and she is, her father's in the hospital dying of cancer. 
and there's nothing more that they can do. It's the end of the line. And she says, you know, I just feel like we're plugging the holes. And I knew exactly what she was talking about. Because I feel like that sometimes too. Even with simple little struggles, I feel like I'm just plugging the holes until the next time. <laughs> so as I went along collecting material for this painting and getting off the phone with my friend, this is very current, very moment oriented, I'm in that place. I'm taking the struggle of that she's going through, I'm going through it, I'm really thinking about it, because that morning, on the way in, not only was there this happening with her, but there was the BP spill. That was horrendous. This was all over the news, and it was so unbelievable and such a part of our humanity. I, and you can't go into the studio and just leave that behind. What's it look like? That's what I was so curious about. So, gathering up my materials, I come to that place, and I put down the darkness and the, the chaos that's happening in the world. I'm, and I'm, I'm gathering the color of materials based on these feelings. And ever since I can remember, I have been, a, I, I translated life and its emotions and feelings into color and texture and movement. I didn't realize until I became an artist that I could, I could see that externally. It's just how I process the world. So, in the end, it's how I transform uh, struggles and sufferings into something that I can move through. This painting, Plugging the Holes, exemplifies that idea. And a lot of the compositions um, in the last series of work that I've been working on have this kind of ascending uh, imagery of, of, of darkness, but then there's light. And if I started out just painting the joy and painting the light, I don't know, you know, I've done that at times, but the transformation that happens when you dig deep into what makes you tick and what makes the world tick in your own humanity, that transformation is so beautiful that actually exploring that turns out to be more beautiful than just going for the gold. brought to light, same ascending kind of imagery going on. And as I paint over the darkness and bring things into the light, there's this beautiful thought, all things go. A lyric by Sufjan Stevens, all things go, the good, the bad. And it's so reassuring because keeping that balance, you know, I learned that in the studio but then I see it in the real world as I'm walking through life. Yeah, all things go, and guess what? Everything's included. You can't parcel out just what you want. That will only lead to suffering. So this whole practice of art has been so completely transformational for me. And I see as I share it that others want to talk about it. They want to they bring it into their homes and start conversations about it. This is the comments I get from collectors. Continue, connection, passing through. And I want to leave you with an image, a painting called Spark, which is a large painting. Most of these that I've shown you are physically large, six foot, five foot. And Spark, the moment of creation, this was created with that thought. After a lot of painting in, um, in the series All Things Go, I wanted to know what it looked like, not only when the grass was about to break ground, but as it did. You know, and I just, oh, when I got that idea, I thought I can't wait to put color and movement and texture to that. I want to see that, the genesis. And so Spark, for me, represented this bursting through of life of personal growth, spiritual growth, and growth as innovation. I'll leave you with Spark. Thank you.